हरे कृष्ण महाराज धनवर प्रणाम श्रील प्रभुपात थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग योर वैल्यूबल टाइम एंड एसोसिएशन टू अस दिस मॉर्निंग महाराज एंड एनलाइटिंग ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ श्रीमद भागतम आई हैंड ऑफ द कॉल टू यू महाराज थैंक यू सो मच हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम सायदाग्रम निवयाय निरिक्षकायम कृष्णाय दुष्टम यससे निरुपक्रमयम ंगहायंबंतनिरासुप्रीम प्यूर यू लिव विथ इन दर्ड ऑफ एवरी वन हार्ट observe all the desires and activities of the condition so o supreme personality of god and known as lord krishna the reputation is bright and illuminating you have no beginning for you are the beginning of everything this is understood by pure devotees because you are easily acceptable to the pure and truthful when the conditioned souls are liberated and sheltered at your lotus feet after roving Throughout the material world for many millions of years, they attain the highest success of life. Therefore, O Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, we offer our respectful obeisances to your lotus feet. <clears throat> to the Prabhupada's purport, the demigods certainly wanted Lord Krishna to relieve their anxiety, but now they directly approach Lord Krishna for. Although there is no difference between Lord Krishna and Lord Vishnu, Krishna descends to his planet in his Vasudev feature for the purpose of Parichanayam Sarunam, Vinasanaya Chaduskritam, protecting his devotees and annihilating the miscreants. Demons or atheists always disturb the devotees, always disturb the demigods or devotees, and therefore Krishna descends to punish the atheists. And demons and fulfill the desires of his devotees. Krishna, being the original cause of everything, is a supreme person above all, above even Vishnu and Narayan. Although there is no difference between the different forms of the Lord, as explained in the Brahma Samhita five forty six, the parche eva he got sakaram abhyupe kam di pa yate vivita he tu samara dharma. कृष्ण एक्सपैंड हिमसेल्फ एज विष्णु द वे द ब्राइट कैंडल कैंडल्स अनदर अदर देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन द पावर ऑफ वन कैंडल अनदर कृष्ण इज कंपेयर टू दी ओरिजिनल कैंडल The word Mishnu Vyasa say is significant herein because Krishna is always famous for relieving his devotee from danger. A devotee who has sacrificed everything for the service of Krishna, and whose source of relief is the Lord, is known as a kinchana, as expressed in the prayers offered by Queen Tukunti. The Lord is a kinchana vitti, the property of such devotees. Those who are liberated from the bondage of conditional life are elevated to the spiritual world, where they achieve five kinds of liberation: sahaja, salukya, sarupya, sarshti, and samipya. They personally associate with the Lord in five mellow: shanta, dasya, sakya, vatsaya, madhurya. These rasas are all emanations from Krishna, as described by Vishwana Jagavati Thakur. The original mellow. Ari Ras is conjugal love. Krishna is the original. Krishna is the origin of pure and spiritual conjugal love. 
Omagyanti Medanda Snyagana Jana Savakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tas by Sri Gadavina Maha. The Mao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Mahabhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine. Namaste, Sarah Swati Deva, Swami Nitinamine, Swami Nitinamine, Swami Nitinamine, Swami Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadanakar Sri Vansari Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Rama Hare Rama so it's uh, natural, normal, and it's current when someone finds themselves in a difficult situation, they pray God for help. Sometimes they say there's no atheists in the foxholes. Of course, with the demigods, they have full knowledge of the Supreme Lord. At least they have knowledge of his position. And so they're in trouble. Uh, <clears throat> the demon, uh, Pichasura, is very powerful. And the demigods know they can't defeat him. So they're praying to the Lord for mercy. <laughs> But in their prayer, it's interesting that they glorify the Lord in different ways. So a prayer is not something that we simply ask something from the Lord. That is not a prayer. That's part of a prayer. The prayer, the prayer is just like when you come in contact with an important person. You may exchange nice greetings and nice words also. And then you may go into a conversation. But there is a greeting, there is a wording, there is some, some uh, appreciation for each other, some, uh, some congratulations. And in this way, this opens up the uh, dialogue because prayer is a dialogue. It's not simply a one-way program. Krishna is listening to our prayers and he will also respond. So that is the dialogue. And so it's interesting. It's not, not, not only interesting, but it, it is proper to glorify the Lord in different ways. Because out of all of the personalities in existence, the Lord is the most glorifiable. In fact, glorification of the Lord is the essence of life. One who glorifies the Lord is actually situated properly in Krishna consciousness, or we might say pure consciousness, because everything about the Lord is glorifiable. Uh, we see that everything in this verse, it mentions that there are so many manifestations of the Lord's forms that come on the order of the Lord in order to take care of the functions that are required both in the spiritual and material realms. So when we speak of the Lord, we speak of the Supreme Lord, and that is the personality of Godhead, the source of all, Vishwara Parama Krishna, Satchit Ananda, Vigraha Anadir Adi Govinda, Sarva Karma Karma. There are many manifestations of the Supreme Lord, but there is one Supreme Original. The example was given here so that although the same candle power exists within all of the different manifestations of the forms of the Lord, the original candle is the one that is the source of the manifestations of these different forms. 
of course, all the forms are eternal. So when some when a form manifests in a particular world, in a particular way, it's not that it begins its existing. And when we say they come from Krishna, it means that they're already existing, but by his will, they manifest in the material or spiritual realms in order to function in a certain capacity according to the, the, the arrangement of the Lord and his desire. So God is the perfect uh, orchestrator. He knows how to do everything perfectly and complete. He never makes a mistake. <laughs> Sometimes people see the anomalies in this world and understand that God is the creator. And so they blame or they can't understand why the anomalies are there when God is so perfect and God is so kind. Well, the anomalies are there, just like it says here in this first word, that there are demons. You know, demons cause problems to others without any reason they just their business is to give trouble to others <laughs> that is their whole business that's what a demon is and there are many demons there are, in fact there are planets that inhabit you know millions and millions of demons on these planets and many of these demons are very powerful some of them can fly through the air Many of them have great, great intelligence, much more higher intelligence than the human forms. They're higher beings, actually, although they're demons, they're higher beings intelligently. Of course, their intelligence is misdirected. But still, they're more materially intelligent than the humans, much more. In fact, when Ravana was, uh, you know, giving benedictions by Lord Brahma after he had performed many penances and austerity. When it came to not being killed by human beings, he said, don't even give me that benediction. The humans are so puny. <laughs> oh, you know, what, what can human, what, what could any human do to me? <laughs> so... So of course, the Lord appeared in the human form, but he was the Lord, not just a human. But this is how the demons think. They are very powerful. Many of them have mystic power. Many of them have <clears throat> great intelligence where they can manipulate the material energies in such a way that will bewilder the mind, even the greatest scientists. <clears throat> But simply their business is to cause trouble. So why do these persons exist? Because um, that's the nature of the material world. The material world means a place where people become separated from the Lord to enjoy separately from the Lord. And when that enjoyment has a certain characteristic about it, in other words, when it becomes fully, when one fully dedicates themselves to living a life of sinful sense gratification, then they are categorized as demons. And they're those who have that karma and they're born like that. So um, as long as there is a material world, there will be demons. And as long as there's demons, there's always problems. And therefore it's mentioned in this verse, just like we see here, we have this, of course, this is an interesting, in combination, this demon is not actually a demon, although he's in the form of a demon, he's actually a great devotee. His formerly was Chitra Ketu in a previous life who had com apparently committed an offense against um, Parvati and she cursed him. She, he, she claimed that he committed offense against Lord Shiva. And so being the wife of Shiva, she cursed him. She is the personification of the material energy. She's extremely powerful. And she cursed him to take birth as a demon. But because he was a devotee and never left devotional consciousness, he remained as a, de a devotee inside of a demon. But by having a demon body, he acted like a demon, at least externally. 
at least externally, but not within his heart. <clears throat> it's an interesting situation, this Vitrasura. Uh, and so uh, the Lord is the source of everything, both apparently good and apparently uh, evil. But this is, he doesn't create evil. He creates a situation where everyone has a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. And those who run the other way, who try to exploit the material energy, they do it at their own choice, not by the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is that every he wants to see everyone come back to him in loving devotional service. And therefore, he arranges so many things in this material world to bring the conditioned souls back to him in loving devotional service. And therefore, he manifests himself in different incarnations of himself to carry out the different functions of, the, of bringing back the conditioned souls. As is mentioned here, Vishnu is a manifestation or an incarnation of Krishna. Sometimes it is mistakenly said that um, Krishna is an incarnation of Vishnu. Um, that's for people who do not understand Krishna's position. The scriptures clearly explain in different that Krishna is Adi Purush, he is the original Supreme Person Godhead. All of the manifestations of the Vishnu forms are expansions of his energies in order to function in the material world. So, in other words, Vishnu takes the form of different incarnations who kill the demons, such as such as Parasaram and Kalki and uh, uh, and the other incarnations of Baraha Dev and uh, <clears throat> different incarnations of the Lord are actually ex are manifestations of the Vishnu forms of the Lord for the sake of doing work in the material world in order to rectify the anomalies. As it says that uh, Brahma, he creates everything. And through the power that he has received directly from Krishna, Tene Brahmahida Aditavaye. Brahma's power is not his power. He has great intelligence, so he knows how to, to use the power given by him to Krishna in pure devotion to Krishna in order to do the process of creation each time it's needed. And then you have Shiva who is um, the manifestation of uh, pralaya, or destruction, of the material world. He does it in a very interesting way. He dances. It's called Tandava, the Tandava dance. And he dances. If you go to one, there's one temple in, um, in Maharashtra. It's in a place called... Um, I don't remember where it was. <clears throat> it's in Maharashtra, though, somewhere just uh, south of Pune. Satara. It's in, yes, yeah, in Satara. Satara. And in that temple is a big complex. And on the walls, there is engravings of Shiva in his Tandava dance. And there's about, uh, I think I counted it, there's about uh, 155 different uh, displays of Shiva dancing his Tundava dance, which is the dance of Pralaya, and the dance of destruction. So the Lord employs Shiva for destruction. He employs um, Brahma for creation. And in order for maintenance, he manifests himself as Lord Vishnu in order to maintain material existence. So when he comes to kill the demons, it's the Vishnu manifestation within Krishna that actually does the demon killing, not Krishna himself. And this is very difficult to understand. As it says, Krishna comes to the material world in order to kill the demons, but he manifests his, 
his form as Vishnu in order to do that. Vishnu carries the four symbols, the chakra, the uh, club, the lotus flower, and the conch. In different positions, there are different manifestations of those positions. Two of the weapon, two of the arms are for the devotees, and two are for the demons. <laughs> and so, um, and it mentions here that God is the, or Krishna specifically, is the manifestation of the different rasas, the Santya, Shantya, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsaya, Madhurya. All of these rasas come, and it says that he is the king of all rasas, and he's given credit as Madhurya Ras, because Madhurya Ras is the sum total of all of the happiness that is achieved in all of the other rasas. As everything is fully transcendental and fully joyful, full of ananda, there is intensity. Just like if you take uh, <clears throat> coldness you know, if you want to go you just like we know that celsius zero celsius is freezing but then you can go minus 10 you can go minus 100 so when you go to minus 436 degrees celsius you have absolute cold there's not an element of heat anywhere in that in that calculation so, and then if you go the other way with heat, and the heat becomes hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. So in the same way, both, both of those things are absolute, both are heat and cold in an absolute sense, but in the absolute sense of the word, the intensity of each of those elements is greater. So we see that the happiness that comes or the variety of happiness that comes with Madhurya Ras is the king of all Rasas. It's the king of all Rasas. That's why Krishna is giving connection with the Madhurya Ras in this particular uh, statement, just to show that out of all the Rasas, Madhurya is the highest, and Krishna is uh, connected with that because he is the sum total of all rasas. It also mentions the different uh, manifestations of liberation, Samipya, Sam Samartya, Salokya, Sahujya, five different manifestations. Four of them are Krishna conscious liberations, and one is impersonal liberation, sahuja mukti, and that one the devotees stay clear of. And so these other ones are um, different qualities and characteristics that one can achieve upon gaining liberation. One can associate with Krishna on another planet. One can have the same form as Krishna. One can have the same opulences as Krishna. These are different uh, manifestations, and one can have the same, uh, what is the other one? Form, opulences, uh, samipya. Sharshti is opulence, samipya, salokya, sahuja, and sarupya. So, uh, but devotees are not interested in liberation. Devotees want to serve the Lord. Just like we see this demon. Um, uh, Vitrasura. Now we know in his previous life, he was a great devotee named Chitraketu, being cursed by um, Parvati. When he was cursed, he bowed to Parvati and thanked her for her mercy and said, my dear mother, now I'm leaving. I'm on my way to hell. Shiva was standing there also, and he was amazed. And he quoted that famous verse. 
Narayana Pranat Sarvena Kushchachat Nabibhyati. That wherever the devotees of Narayan are, it doesn't matter. They are like a compass, just like a compass is always calculated toward the northern direction. So the devotees calculate their consciousness always towards Krishna, whether they're in heaven, they're in hell, they're in wherever they are, whatever place within the three material existence they are, they keep their consciousness on Krishna. Therefore, they're always in the spiritual consciousness. Doesn't matter what environment they're in. The environment has a tendency to affect us, but for a devotee who is fixed in Krishna consciousness, they are fixed on Krishna and the environment becomes something in the background. <laughs> okay, so it's a very nice verse. Prayers to the Lord by the demigods, praying for his shelter of his lotus feet, and then uh, then the Lord will respond in the next verse to their prayers. <clears throat> Thank you. And we'll stop there. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much for a very beautiful class, Prabhu. Each and every point, it was so enlightening. Thank you so much, Maharaj. If anybody have any questions or realizations you'd like to share, please unmute yourself. And please go ahead. Hare Krishna devotees. Sukara, Krishna does. Prabhuji, uh, Prabhuji, can you please uh, explain that um, uh, five kinds of liberation, Saija, Salodhya, Sarupya, Sasti, and Samipya? Oh, okay. Dr. K. Karpagav. Yes. Okay. So, that's mentioned in the third canto with descriptions of each one. Darshti means to have to attain to attain to the same opulences of the Lord. Salokya means to reside on the same planet in the material world where the Lord is performing his pastimes. Sarupya means to have the same transcendental form of the Lord. Samitya. I'm not sure what Samitya means. I forgot. And Sahuja means to... Samitya means living closer to the God. Say again, Shyam. Staying closer to the Lord. Samitya. Samipya. What does it mean? Closer to the Lord. Closer. Samipya. Mm, there's more to the definition than that. That's not. Madhuriya ras. Madhuriya bhakti. Anyway, look it up. Uh, the uh, and so what you mean is. Uh, to merge into the bodily focus of the Lord, which is for the impersonalist, the Maya, the Maya bodies. We're not interested in that. Okay. Uh, Sukhakar Krishna Prabhu, please go ahead, Prabhu Jivati. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Chandramani Maharaj, please accept my rest of the way to the feet. Maharaj, I just I got a question. So the you said that we have to glorify the Lord. Is glorification of the Lord by telling some slokas also is glorification of the Lord? Or if, we, if you do some slokas? Can you uh, repeat that a little slower? No, no. No, the, the glorification of the Lord, that's the, if you tell some slokas like Krishna, Vasudevaya, Devaki, Nandanayaja, 
Nanda Gopakumara as Govindan Mas. Those also glorification or we have to read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita and then tell others. Or just the prayers also is glorification. Yeah. See, my Bhagavatam is just saturated with prayers. That's all it is, practically. And those ones you mentioned are from Queen Kunti. And Maharaj, one more question I have got. See, we have got the free will and uh, God has given us the free will and uh, we misuse the free will and we get into the aparad. But, uh, but everything happens with the sanction of the Lord. So the Lord can make us not to do the misuse the free will. Whether he can also do that, whether he can also bless that we don't misuse the free will, uh, which is not favorable to devotional service. Whether he can sanction that, whether he can change our free will, I mean, misusing the free will. Um, the Lord given, because you are part and parcel of Krishna, you also are Swarat to a small degree. That means you uh, have independence. The whole idea of independence is to choose between Krishna and Maya. Without choice, no love. So Krishna allows us to have our independence, but at the same time, he always tells us what we should be doing. He says, don't do that. <laughs> Here, do this. But we don't listen. Because we don't listen, you know, we get a reaction from the material energy and we suffer or we distance ourselves farther away from Krishna because of our independent, wrong independent activities. But yeah, he sanctioned it because he allows that to happen because he doesn't interfere with your free will. But if you carefully understand Krishna is always encouraging us to do the right thing, and he's even arranging for us to help to do the right thing. But still, we remain oblivious to his uh, entreats. We go on with our ideas, thinking we'll be happy, independent of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. Yay. This amazing of hand from Scarlet Mataji and Amy Mataji. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Scarlet Mataji, please go ahead, Mataji. Please unmute yourself. And... Uh, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to you, Shara Prabhupada. All glories to you and all glories to you, Sambal devotees. Um, you mentioned about the uh, uh, demons uh, are even uh, even demons are amongst us people. Uh, that makes me wonder. I, for instance, I, in my country, I knew a girl that was in the family, which they were horrible to her. And uh, it, it happened many, many things uh, from the family members to her. Does this mean that uh, they they may have the demonic uh, personality, was born as a brother, as a mother, as a father who abused her so many, 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 many times? Could it be? Read in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes the qualities of the saintly and the unsaintly. But he gives most of the chapters time to the unsaintly. He describes the characteristics of the demons. So there are a race of people called demons. They're actually a race. Mm -hmm. But there are people who become demonic by their activities. So when you study the qualities of the demons, you can see people are taking on demoniac characteristics. It doesn't mean that they were born demons or become like that. But there are actually persons who are born on the planets where demons exist. That's a whole race of demons. There are many planets like that. They, they're right below the earth and they also come onto the earth also. But then again, there are people who are demoniac in activity in nature. 
they take on these these bad qualities for their own selfish and greedy interests. Thank you. So, yeah. Sometimes we act like that too once in a while. Amy. That was Pranam uh, Maharaj, beautiful class. <clears throat> I just have a question uh, along the line of what was just said, like uh, by Shukra Krishan Prabhuji. Uh, when, when we make mistakes uh, unknowingly uh, because of our oversight or our forgetfulness, is that mistake is also a free will or is it our prarabdha karma because of which we did it? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. It's a mistake. <laughs> Whether it comes from your free will or it comes from some karmic activity that has manifested from the past, it's still a mistake. How are you going to be able to search that out? You can't. You can't search that. Well, I made a mistake now. Maybe it was my karma that influenced me to make that mistake. Or maybe I just didn't think about the situation properly and I acted wrongly there if I made a mistake. So how do you know? You, you don't worry about that. The fact is just don't make any mistakes and try to correct your mistakes. Whether it's from the past or from the present, it, it's still what it is. It's like, so, Marad, it's like saying, well, you know, uh, was the, the paper cut with a knife or was the paper cut with a scissor? The fact is the paper was cut. Whether it was cut with a knife or with a scissors, it doesn't matter. Thank you. Yeah. You understand the point? Don't worry about the source. Just act, try to act in a Krishna conscious way or act in an intelligent way. And then even if it's something from the past, you can overcome that by intelligent activity. And if it's something from the present, then you're just acting properly. You can't understand. You're not going to be able to, you know, search out whether it's coming from this source or that source. You can try, but you'll never come to some clear conclusion. You'll just, you'll just hypothesize, you'll just speculate. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all. And the fact is, it happened. Thank you, Maharaj. So basically, if it happens, one can only repent and uh, try not to do it again. Yeah. Understand the situation, pray to Krishna, and avoid the... Uh, Avoid acting the way you did. We let me say we learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hema Mataji, please go ahead. You already did. Mataji, please unmute yourself and please go ahead, ma'am. There's no questions up right now. Hey, Mataji, some raise the hand. That's okay. I'm Mataji, I just got it. It is yes. already done. Vardhana Mataji, it is done. Okay. Okay. Do we conclude here? Mm -hmm. Or do we want to continue? Maharaj, there is in the chat room, there is one question, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, thank you so much for wonderful class. How we can get initiation from 
from you maharaj can just one spouse get when other is not ready yet how long does process take i stay out of india how long does it take in order to get initiated is that what the question is yeah they're aspiring from you maharaj and the family is not ready yet um, but uh, spouse wants to take so how long does process take place we should uh, i don't know all of this directly It comes through to other devotees who do the service on my behalf so uh, you can write to uh, my disciple radha bhakti she can give you the information that's required what 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 you do to qualify yourself she uh, there are principles there are requirements there are activities you need to perform so um her email address is i believe it's uh, radha bhakti let's see Sri Devi, give Radha Bhakti's email address. I think Martha Ji sent a few days ago. Uh, I think she is waiting for the reply, Maharaj, from Radha Bhakti Martha Ji. Yeah, she'll get to it. She's got a lot of a lot of stories in she does. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I'll send you a reminder. Mataji, please follow up with Radha Bhakti Mataji once again. And... The name is Adarya. It's Radha Bhakti DD CMS at uh, Yahoo dot com. No, sorry, Gmail dot com. Mataji, you can type in in the chat box. Okay, Chamagori Mataji, do you have anything, Mataji? Hi, Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Okay, I guess we finished. We can stop here. Thank you so much, Prabhu Maharaj, for your very wonderful class. And we are looking forward for your association again and again in the future. Lalitangi Mataji, do you have anything, Mataji? Yeah.